Obsidian recently updated their PDF viewer, allowing you to link to certain selections of a PDF inside of Obsidian. But there are community plugins that already do this, and I want to do a comparison video. So, Annotator is a plugin that allows you to use PDFs inside of Obsidian, but then annotate and add notes on the PDF in Obsidian. It has been six months since the last update, so as the PDF viewer in Obsidian Core changes, this may not work. And in the moment, you need to use an annotation target at the top. So you can see I've got this PDF here and if I open it, it shows the PDF and what this actually is is a blog article that I've saved as a PDF. I've added a couple of highlights inside of Edge, which is my browser of choice, Microsoft Edge. And then if I drag this into the folder, I now have the PDF inside of Obsidian. Now when I click on the PDF, it brings me to this viewer. If I hold control on my keyboard and scroll with the mouse wheel, it zooms me out. Alternatively, I can use the, the minus and the plus buttons. If I click the sidebar, it hides the sidebar and I can click to open. The down arrow gives me the thumbnail option. If there was a table of content, because this is a saved article, not an actual PDF, there's no table of content. So that could be an option if it's a PDF. And then you can reveal the page and table of contents. You can jump to any page of the document. Then when you click on the drop down arrow, you can fit to width, fit to height, single page, two page or two page even. So if I scroll out, you can see you've got different viewing options with the PDF, but I'm going to stick with single page and zoom in. Now down the bottom, it will adapt to theme, so you can change it to dark mode. I personally have found most text goes a bit blurry when I move it to dark mode, but that's just me. And the way annotator works is if I create a new file in this folder, call it annotations, and then add the three dashes and three dashes below to add front matter or metadata into this file. And as it says in the instructions, I need to put annotation dash target colon. And after that, I need to give it the path or the location of the PDF file I want the annotations from, which I've put it in the same folder. You can move these any way you want because Obsidian is files and folders. So I'm going to drag this in just to make it easier. And I don't need those square brackets because I don't need it linked. And I also don't need the exclamation mark because I don't need to embed it either. So now I have a markdown file called annotations with front matter with an annotation target field that is directing to the PDF file that happens to be in the same folder. So I can go to the top right, click on the three dots, and now an option has come up to say annotate. And after pushing the annotate button, I now have you can see the annotations file is in this PDF viewer. If I click on the PDF, it takes me to the Obsidian Core PDF viewer. So this is Core Obsidian. This is the annotations plugin PDF viewer. So they're two different viewers. You can see very similar options on the sidebar. You can still change the pages, zoom in, zoom out, all the options you would expect in a PDF viewer. And it still has the highlights that are on the PDF file. But if I come in, say, unnecessary suffering, I highlight that, I can then highlight it inside of the annotations viewer. You can see it's come up in the sidebar, highlighted. If I hover the mouse over, it goes blue, come back, it's yellow. It's quite faint, but you can still see it. Then if I highlight the next couple of words and this time annotate, it gives me an option to then annotate the highlight. And when adding information inside of this box, you can actually add a tag. So let's go hash tag save annotation. Opening up the PDF file again, you can see there's no changes of the PDF file, but inside this annotations PDF viewer, that is where the highlights are. So the highlights are stored separate from the PDF. Now, if I wanted to go back into the markdown file, I can click on the three dots and it says open as markdown. And now you're seeing what the plugin's actually doing. So the plugin is adding a lot of code, which I don't understand. I'm not even going to pretend to understand, but it's adding it in. And you can see there's the highlights. I think that's the highlight. Yeah, it is. And it's also adding block IDs. So I wouldn't recommend going into here, but this is what it looks like. Then going to the three dots and annotate takes you back to the annotation option. Now this interface here with the navigation and the highlights is very similar to Zotero, which is what I personally use. You can see in the left sidebar, we got the navigation and then I have the highlights all in here. These are some highlights that I did earlier. But because the highlights and notes are somewhat separate inside of this viewer and inside of here, it makes moving them out a little bit harder, which is why I don't use this plugin. So I'm going to bring the PDF in to the second folder, extract PDF annotation. And the extract PDF annotations does exactly what it says. It gives you a command to extract the annotations of the PDF. And by annotations, in this case, it means the highlights. So you can see we've got the highlight there and then two red highlights here. 
I push Ctrl P for the command palette. Alternatively, you can go into the ribbon and open the command palette. Typing extract brings up the command option, so extract PDF annotation. And it's created a file. You can see annotations of PDF, blah, 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 blah. That's the name of the PDF. Extracted annotations. And these are the highlights with a link to the file, but all of these links are exactly the same. So if I click on this, it will open up the PDF, not to where it is. These highlights just happen to be at the top. So I'm going to drag this into the folder just so we know what's going on. So this annotation file has been created from this PDF using the command. If I come back to my PDF, let's go into here. Let's add a highlight down there. Now I've changed the PDF, I save it. Nothing has changed to this PDF inside of the folder because this PDF is saved in Obsidian. The other PDF is saved on my system somewhere else. So you can see the PDF I edited is saved on my e hard drive and the PDF folder, which is actually my backup of Zotero. So now when I drag this in and then go and take a look. So now I have two versions of the same PDF, one of them with annotations, the other one without. So I don't like this plugin because if I add a highlight, I then need to bring the PDF in again, then do the extraction, and it's just too much work for me personally. And something else to be aware of is it hasn't been updated in a year, so I'm not sure what the maintenance is like on this plugin. And speaking of maintenance, you can see the PDF highlights here. It's got a lot of downloads, but it hasn't been updated in two years. And if we go and bring the PDF in again, yes, I know there's duplicates. I'm just doing this for clarity so you can see what's going on. If you want the template, it will be linked in the description. But we have our PDF. And then if I come over to the ribbon, you can see PDF highlights. And if I push this button, it's meant to create a file that has the highlights but it doesn't do anything. I might be missing something, but that's what it says in the instructions. So I have a feeling that this plugin actually broke with the recent core updates. So if I right click new note, call it highlights. What the core Obsidian app now lets you do is uh, let's come down to here. Let's highlight these words. And if I right click, it lets me copy and then control V to paste. So I've now copied text from the PDF into my markdown or I can highlight those words again, right click, copy link to selection. Now I'm going to paste it and you can see here is a link to that file, but it has all the information of the PDF selection. So when I click on this link, it takes me to that highlighted section, that selection in the PDF. If you don't like the look of this link, you can change the look. So I'm going to add a alias and call it link. Now when I come out, it's just going to show link. But when I click it, it still goes to that highlighted point. But as you can see, that's all in Obsidian. That's not on the PDF. So any highlights you make in that way and links you make in that way isn't saved on the PDF either. Now coming into Zotero, this is the PDF that we're working on. This PDF is actually saved in two places. One of them is the one that I've just been showing you. This one right here. This is the PDF that's saved as a backup. So I've got highlights in my backup, which I will remove. So I'm going to push the rubber. Let's get rid of that, get rid of that and that that oh there was three there and then i can push save so now my backup is nice and empty i'm talking rubbish that wasn't my backup that was the pdf that's inside of zotero but the zotero highlights are saved in another pdf which is in the zotero database and i've also got that synced online there's more information about zotero i'll leave a link in the description for that if i scroll all the way down to the bottom i can add an area highlight which i couldn't do in some of the other plugins there are more colors, which I don't have in some of the other plugins. There are notes, again, I don't have in some of the other plugins that I mentioned. And then when I come into Obsidian, you can see I've got a template here. This is the template I use, and this is fully customizable. There are lots of options I suggest going into the Academia channel inside of the Obsidian Discord for more information and certainly more help. This template is very simple. It brings in the annotations. It tells me what color the annotation was and gives me a link. That's all I need. And then some other information up here. Again, you can find a link in the description below to this template. But this gives me far more flexibility with the annotations that I can bring in, the way that it looks, and the note that's associated with it. Coming into the settings, I'm using this import setting. I'll leave a link in the top right for the video that explains this setup. But all I've done is added the Zotero template told it to go to Zotero import. Now I can push on the command palette, Zotero import one, type in the Zotero library box to try and find it. So this is the one I'm looking for. Enter, you can see it's fetching annotations and there it is. Now when I click on the file, it's brought in a year, it's added the class to it, which is what I personally use. It's added the author, it's added the title, the URL, the Zotero link. So if I click on that, it takes me back to the PDF in Zotero. But more importantly, if I scroll down and let's say click on page two, it will change it inside of Zotero. So if I have Zotero, I have it on two screens on another screen. It will then move me in line with the highlights that I'm reading as I go down the page, which is very useful. If I then want to add another highlight as I'm reading through. So let's add this highlight in here. 
all I need to do is come back in here and do the import again. So going all the way through, then push enter, made the window small. As I scroll down, you can see there's the new highlight and it's actually brought in the image, which is here, which is very useful and that's why I use it. So although this update is really nice being able to link to a section in PDFs, I much prefer using Zotero because of all of Zotero's options, such as linking to Obsidian and from Obsidian, clipping things from the internet. So I clip videos, I clip podcasts and blogs and articles and academic papers and articles alongside books. There is also more metadata on the PDFs or any of the items that I have inside of Zotero. You can see I've got tags as well. I've got folders and collections. I have my RSS feeds in here. So Zotero does much more than is just a PDF reader. But if you just want to have a link to a section of a PDF, the Core Obsidian app now lets you do that, which is great to see.